Uh, good morning, everybody. I think we're going to start now. Um, good morning and welcome back to winter um, and uh, to our first biannual member update. It's a pleasure to be joining everyone today. Uh, for those of you who don't know who, my, who I am, my name is Andy Donovan and I'm the Director of Member Engagement and Business Development here at LSO. The goal of these events is to inform, educate and engage members of the LSO and life sciences communities to participate in our events, our initiatives and partner programs. These of course are all designed to maximize their investment in our mission, which quite simply put is to foster a commercially successful life sciences sector here in Ontario and beyond. For the benefit of our newer members and those in waiting, over the next several minutes, you will learn more about who we are, our values, and what we do to strengthen the life sciences ecosystem in the province. We'll also share details on our member benefits, how you and your organization can become more involved with us, some of the initiatives we've been working on this year, and a preview of those to come. With that, we thank you for joining us today and invite you to share any questions you may have in the chat or the Q&A features. As you may or may not know, LSO is a nonprofit member-driven association representing the collective voice of the pharma, medtech, biotech, agritech, and cannabis industries here in Ontario. We believe that a coordinated and collaborative approach with government, industry, academia, and all the various stakeholders within the sector is the key to our collective success. We believe that only through an inclusive, consultative, and consensus-focused approach will we be able to maximize the impact of the sector. We are able to capitalize on opportunities to strengthen our members' interests through various initiatives such as advocacy, education, mentorship, and networking, all of which I'll expand upon in a few minutes, and something we encourage all of our members to learn more about and actively support. As mentioned, we are the voice of the life sciences sector here in Ontario, with representation from core life sciences organizations such as the pharmaceutical and medtech industries, as well as those organizations that support this sector, such as law firms, accounting firms, and other service providers. We also boast a strong presence from academia and various municipal government departments from within the various provincial ecosystems where life sciences is a major employer. These members work collaboratively with LSO in various ways to allow us to align their corporate goals and objectives with the opportunities to support a vibrant sector. As I mentioned earlier, LSO's foundation rests on our four pillars of advocacy, education, mentorship, and networking. Over the past few years, our focus at the federal level for our members in the pharmaceutical industry has been on the changes to drug pricing and the proposed National Pharmacare Initiative. In Ontario, and as an official lobby group for the life sciences sector, we've been working hard with various ministries to engage in dialogue that will address several key issues such as procurement and cutting through red tape for our members as they look to commercialize and scale up their operations. We also host several events throughout the year designed to provide a forum for our members to discuss issues that are facing the sector and provide opportunities to learn about potential solutions and more importantly, how they can become part of the process. Mentorship is also a strong element of what we offer to our members. Whether they are looking to become a mentee or a mentor, we can provide a forum for both. We have an online community via the 10,000 Coffees platform, where members from across the sector can engage with each other to gain insights and make connections that may help them as they build out their network. With the support of participating co member corporations, we also provide college and university students with one-on-one -on -one mentorship support through our LSO scholarship. In terms of networking, this could be one of the strongest pillars as we host several events throughout the year designed to create an informal platform from which to meet and develop connections within the sector, such as our signature events and monthly breakfast forums. Overall, from our humble beginnings as an event-based organization, we've developed into a community and thought leader for the life sciences sector. As members of the LSO community, your organization is privy to several channels designed to enhance brand awareness and audience engagement. These include the ability to amplify news and announcements as well as events through our weekly member newsletter and social media channels. Your organization can also participate as a corporate or an event sponsor, maximizing the reach of, and impact of your corporate brand and audience interaction. We also provide access to professional development tools as well as access to talent via industry partners such as BioTalent Canada. 
We can, uh, we can also provide access to affordable health and dental benefits through our partner BioBenefits. We've touched upon our ability to enhance member networking and access to market intelligence, both of which are immeasurable as you look to enhance your goals and objectives. Finally, we provide business support by offering discounts on travel, lab equipment and supplies, and free or discounted job postings on BioTalent Canada's Petri Dish, Canada's only national bilingual biotech job board. Member companies and organizations can also access corporate discount programs from LSO partners. As a community-based industry association, we encourage our members to actively participate in our, initiative, our initiatives by attending networking events throughout the year. As well, to elevate networking opportunities, we have several volunteer committees made up of industry leaders that help guide us in identifying topics and speakers that will help to deepen our understanding of the opportunities that exist to further impact the sector. Dovetailing from our events, we encourage members to present topics and speakers that will enhance what we are able to share to a broader audience through these activities. Finally, we encourage our entire community to act as an ambassador for the sector by sharing and or commenting on our initiatives through social media and word of mouth. At this point, I'm now going to invite the Waterloo Warrior himself and our president and CEO, Dr. Jason Field, to share details on our past and current projects for 2021. Thanks so much, Andy. If you could move to the next slide for me. Well, first of all, I just wanna thank everyone for joining us this morning. And I wanna say a special thank you to Andy. Um, this, uh, this event was really uh, his brainchild uh, and he thought it would be a great way to engage our members um, and to provide them an update, an opportunity to ask questions of us um, as well. So we thought it was a great idea and, um, and really glad that, uh, that he, he sort of took it and ran with it. Uh, so thanks, Andy, for setting this all up. So this year, we've uh, had a number of uh, events and projects that have been com completed. Um, we continue to deliver our breakfast forums. Obviously, it's a different environment that we're in uh, with COVID. We've gone completely virtual. But these events, these monthly touch points are really important to continue to connect our community. It's how we started as an organization, and it's how we continue through these very strange times uh, to interact with our community. And we've delivered some really interesting uh, breakfast uh, seminars uh, so far this year, uh, including ones on uh, cannabis-based medicines, uh, the Canada vaccine rollout. We had Mark Lavonin from the uh, uh, National Vaccine Task Force uh, presenting at our AGM this year, as well as our partners at BDO delivering a seminar on how to do business in a virtual world, which we're all experiencing right now. And most recently, we've delivered uh, a, a seminar on our roadmap for uh, recovery, resilience, and prosperity. This is an update to our blueprint for a coordinated strategy, something that we continue to advocate for at both the provincial and federal levels. Networking has been a challenge, obviously, given uh, the restraints um, uh, upon us during the COVID-19 and the pandemic. But you know, our team has really uh, adapted very quickly and I'm really proud of the team. Brian and, and Elizabeth and, and Andy have really pivoted quickly. We were early adopters to the Remo platform, which is a virtual networking platform. And in fact, many of our um, sister organizations in other provinces across Canada um, have since adopted those platforms to enable networking through, um, through their uh, uh, networks as well. So we're gonna to continue to deliver those, including um, you would recall that our, our annual gala, awards gala, which we host in February, um, since we weren't able to get together uh, this year, we've postponed that till October. Uh, however, we thought it important that we still continue to meet um, and connect and celebrate the success of this sector. And we did that using the Remo platform as well. We also run a number of um, industry-related events that are outside of our, our core events. And we've done several seminars um, with partners such as CARP, which is the Canadian Association for Retired Persons, uh, on access to medicines and the impact of some of the federal regulations that are happening and some of the concerns that um, uh, members of, of the seniors community uh, do have in regards to access to new medicines. 
as well as uh, with uh, CORD, the uh, Canadian Organization for Rare Disease. We know that the, uh, the federal government has made uh, fairly significant commitments around a rare disease strategy, and we're working and collaborating with our partners uh, federally and across other provinces uh, to align around what needs to happen in order to make the most out of ensuring that patients with rare disease have the access, uh, the timely access that they need uh, to these uh, new treatments that are coming onto the market. Other projects um, have included our scholarship program, um, and Elizabeth has really been uh, leading the charge on our scholarship program. Uh, we've just closed the application process, and the team right now is reviewing um, and over 200, we had over 200 uh, applications, and we're doing our first round of reviews uh, this week uh, into next week. And uh, so stay tuned, there will be announcements uh, forthcoming around the recipients. I'm so proud of this program. This is the third year we're running this program. It continues to grow. Um, this year, um, Andy, you're going to have to correct me on this, but I think this is 47 uh, awards that we're, we're giving out this year, something like that. Something it, like that, yeah. It's uh, so, and these are three thousand dollars each. But in, in addition to the money, comes mentorship for these uh, uh, young students uh, with professionals uh, within the life sciences sector. Um, this is completely sponsored through our membership. Uh, it's just an absolutely amazing program, and I'm so proud uh, to be a part of it. Uh, we've also uh, recently issued an open letter um, with 18 other organizations uh, across Canada, uh, a call to Prime Minister Trudeau uh, to develop a, a coordinated and inclusive uh, life sciences strategy uh, for Canada. Um, and this is something, again, that we're going to continue to advocate for uh, with our partners. Uh, we are very aligned and in terms of what needs to be done. It starts with dialogue and building on the strong public-private partnerships that have emerged during COVID-19. And how can we carry the, those partnerships forward um, in a meaningful way? And so this is beyond um, the dollars that are committed in the budget around biomanufacturing. But how do we have a more integrated and holistic approach to our life sciences industry uh, going forward? Um, <clears throat> If we can go forward to the next uh, slide, Andy. So upcoming, um, we have our member marathon coming up in uh, June. This is a great opportunity uh, to introduce new members to our community, um, as well as uh, uh, longstanding members, um, uh, opportunity for them to provide updates on their offerings, what, what they're doing, um, and really is an opportunity to connect um, our, our members and, and community together. So please join us uh, for that one uh, uh, coming up. Our golf tournament uh, had to be canceled last year, but the courses are open now and uh, there's a little bit of a light at the end of the tunnel. So we're hopeful that this year in August, we'll be able to actually do something uh, potentially in person, um, probably we'd look a little different um, and will likely be a hybrid event as well. Uh, we always want to make sure that we're being inclusive, so you don't have to be a golfer to participate and get benefit from uh, this event, which uh, is a great event that supports the Sanofi Biogenius Challenge. Um, and, uh, and so stay tuned for more details around that that will be coming in the next uh, few weeks. I mentioned our award ceremony, uh, which we had the virtual networking back in February. The official ceremony will be in October. It's uh, scheduled for October 14th. Once again, we're hopeful that we're able to do something in person um, or a hybrid event. Um, so again, stay tuned for more details. We're kind of um, uh, in, a, in a waiting, watching mode, um, but still planning behind the scenes so that we're ready if we're able to do something uh, in, in person. And if not, we will deliver an amazing virtual program. Our policy forum, uh, again, is... Um, is going to be a virtual platform. We've decided on that. It worked really well on the virtual platform last year. We did it over the course of a week. This year will be the first week in November from the 1st to the 5th. And um, it's an hour and a half each day. Uh, we found that that format worked really well in terms of being able to engage uh, participants from across Canada, as well as speakers from around the world. 
uh, we have, we're using the framework of our roadmap document as a guide for the theme uh, throughout the, uh, the, the week-long sessions. So it should be a really interesting program. We've started planning already around that. Our committee has met several times and the agenda is really shaping up. Um, also associated with that will be our Queen's Park Day. Again, we, we you typically do that in person. Uh, last year we did it virtual, found it very effective. Uh, we still haven't decided which way we're going uh, this year, but I think it will, if it, we're doing anything in person, it will likely be the reception and, and uh, a bit of a hybrid event. Um, but we found the virtual meetings with the MPPs uh, worked very well last year and they were very engaged uh, actually. So it was um, uh, a, a good event that, that, that uh, loaned itself well to a virtual platform. And then last but not least, and, and I want to emphasize not least, because this is probably the most important and fundamental initiative that we are undertaking as an organization. Uh, last year, we were signatories to the uh, Canada's 50-30 uh, challenge, as uh, well, well as the Black North initiative. And as part of our uh, commitment uh, to those uh, initiatives, we have formed um, what we call our IDEA committee, that is inclusivity, diversity, equity, and accessibility. Uh, we formed a committee to really do three things. Uh, look at our internal governance on our board in terms of how we select board members and ensure that we are um, adopting and applying the principles of IDEA uh, to that process as well as our internal processes in terms of everything that we do as an organization from hiring staff uh, to all of the events that we run and how do we ensure that these um, principles are embedded into, into all of those uh, activities. And then third, we want to show leadership by developing tools and advice and insights and coordination within the life sciences sector so that all of our members can be leaders in, uh, in the area of IDEA. And uh, as part of that, we've partnered with Shift Health um, to deliver a workshop uh, or a series of workshops that are gonna begin uh, in the fall. We have a steering committee already struck on that. Uh, these are experts within the uh, uh, field of IDEA as well as people with lived experiences. Um, and so that is really coming together. I have to say it's one of uh, the most exciting initiatives that I've been a part of. I'm learning so much uh, and it is, it's, it's very engaging and, and the people that are participating are just phenomenal. So I, I'm really looking forward to these workshops because I know uh, all that participate will uh, certainly have that similar experience and I'm excited for, for all of those uh, individuals as well. Um, so with that, I am going to hand it back over to Andy. Thanks, Jason. Um, and before I, I wrap this up, uh, I just wanted to thank the team for their participation in this presentation. Uh, we are a small team, but we're mighty. Um, so uh, in summary, as a member of LSO, you can have access to a strong collective voice, opportunities to learn and interact with like-minded individuals through our events and mentorship initiatives, and finally participate in, in impactful events designed to enhance your ability to expand your footprint within the sector. We encourage you to visit our website at lifesciencesontario.ca to learn more about what we've presented today or to reach out to any one of us to learn how you can become more involved. At this time, we'd be happy to field any questions from the audience. And you can type your questions in the Q&A or, or the chat box and uh, here's your opportunity to put us on the spot. We've got lots of, uh, of thank yous uh, for, for a great update. So uh, well done, Andy. <laughs> we'll give just a few more minutes for people to type in their questions if they have anything. We gave such a good update. Either that or people are just <laughs> depressed at the, uh, at, at the summery weather that we're now experiencing. All right. Um, I have a specific issue around my company. How do I connect and who do I connect to? Andy, I'm going to throw that one over to you. That's, uh, that's amazing. Well, you can uh, definitely reach out to me. Uh, I'm uh, more than happy to review some of the, uh, some of your specific goals and objectives. 
um, and uh, identify those areas of alignment where we could uh, potentially support you. So um, my uh, contact information is, uh, is pretty easy. It's Andy at lifesciencesontario.ca. Um, but you can uh, definitely reach out to any one of us. We're, we're um, uh, of that mind that uh, we all play a significant role in the financial success of our, our uh, organization to support our mission and our members. So uh, please feel free to reach out. Thanks, Andy. Absolutely. This is a team effort. So you reach out to Andy, but you're really getting all of us. And we all have different expertise and connections and networks. And we really utilize our whole team to ensure that we're meeting the needs of our members. Um, Denise had a, uh, uh, Denise Angela had a question about, uh, a comment in the question, the last webinar was insightful, any webinars scheduled for the near future. And in fact, uh, Denise, stay tuned because uh, after we do the Q&A, we're gonna do a list of upcoming events. So just hang in there uh, a little bit longer. Um, Mark had asked a question, um, tell us about the political advocacy and what have we accomplished? Um, that's a great question, Mark. And, you know, sometimes it's hard to answer that because um, advocacy is one of those things that takes a lot of time um, and, you know, is, is sort of a, a gradual um, progression. And sometimes you don't really notice uh, that progression unless you uh, or, or or an outside observer, or you take a, a step back to sort of take stock. Um, so I think that's always an important question to ask. I, if I was to answer that, I would say our biggest success has been how we have raised the profile of the life sciences industry in Ontario and within the federal government. Um, when I look back, so prior to joining LSO 10 years ago, um, many of you know I was a public servant with the Ontario government, working in the Economic Development Office uh, in the industry division with other industries, uh, autos and aerospace and IT. And I can tell you that uh, life sciences, um, while it was seen as an important sector and, and sort of a uh, forward-looking sector, it was seen as not really an economic contributor, uh, but more of a technology industry of the future. So it was very forward looking. Whereas now, I think that uh, even prior to the pandemic, um, our ability to raise our profile within uh, government ranks in terms of what we have to offer in both economic and social impacts has really increased dramatically. And then when uh, we have the pandemic hit, that has created an environment for us to elevate that profile even more. And so now we're seeing um, multi-billion dollar commitments in federal budgets. The, um, the province is making significant investments as well. We're having ongoing dialogue uh, around uh, the life sciences strategy. Uh, so lots of good things happening, but I would say that ab ability to raise our profile has been our key, um, a key success factor. All right. Um, just looking at the other questions here. Uh, Bernard, how do, how do you see LSO helping with the follow-up to the problems arising from the pandemic on the medical industry? Yeah, so that's a good question too. Um, huge backlog, obviously, in, in terms of, um, of medical procedures, et cetera. We're, we're continuing to have dialogue with uh, the Ministry of Health as well as um, uh, key players across the Ontario government and our stakeholder community. And we wanna be part of the solution. And it comes back to our advocacy around establishing an, uh, a platform for that public-private um, dialogue on an ongoing basis. So that's really the key to, I think, uh, to delivering on that. Um, great job, guys. How do we schedule an educational workshop for members' participation? Um, Andy, do you wanna tackle that one? I think this is sort of a little bit of that, but... Um, yeah. Yeah, you know, just uh, reach out to us. Um, it, it, you know, this is uh, one of the invitations that we have is to uh, uh, come to us to uh, suggest um, topics or initiatives that uh, can definitely uh, uh, provide something that we can uh, uh, distribute to, out to our members. Um, so reach out to any one of us. We'll set up a, a call with you, uh, review some of, the, uh, some of your ideas and then talk about whether we have something already in the hopper 
uh, whether it's a breakfast forum or another initiative that's coming up that might uh, be a nice dovetail for that, or if we uh, can create something that's more tailor-made. So a couple of uh, questions regarding how can members get more involved with, with LSO, and, and that's always a great question. We love to hear that because you know, one of the things uh, we, we tell our members is you will get the most out of your membership in terms of what you put into it as well, right? Um, this is a community and, and you're part of it. Uh, we have a number of committees. Um, we have committees around all of our events. We have uh, a policy and GR committee, which is probably our largest committee to talk about uh, public policy and advocacy. And any of our members can join these committees. So just reach out. Um, connect with one of us, say that you're interested in joining a committee and we'll sign you up and you'll get the invitations for the meetings and, um, and we would love to have uh, your input in, and insights. And uh, Russell is asking about the next steps regarding PMPRB. Wow, that is, um, that has been such a huge topic for so long, Russell. I mean, for over, over two, what, going on three years now, um, we have been very, very active on this file. It's been, um, it's been a really important one. It's been delayed a couple of times, the implementation. We're coming up to the July 1st um, implementation date again. Uh, the pressure is on. Uh, we have been um, applying significant pressure. We've written directly to the uh, Prime Minister's office along with um, coordinating with our colleagues at a national level and across Canada. Um, calling for an additional delay because the first two times they delayed it was because of the pandemic and we're not out of the pandemic yet. So we don't see why um, it should be implemented now and, and not later. So that's number one. Uh, number two is um, we still have significant issues uh, with the regulations themselves and we're continuing to advocate with partners um, that have similar concerns. And what we found is that over time, more communities, more stakeholders are starting to become aware of what the potential impacts and what the real impacts we're already feeling are around this. Um, and so uh, we're, we're continuing to work to educate uh, our partners and uh, build that coalition. Um, so I mentioned CARP, I mentioned CORD, those have been key stakeholders within the patient communities and they're on the front lines of this. They're the ones that we're most concerned about in terms of the impacts uh, to their ability to access medicine. So uh, we're going to continue to work with those partners and continue to advocate uh, very strongly uh, to the federal government uh, with all of our partners. And again, we're very aligned. Um, there is a large contingent of voices out there, uh, not just the industry, but from academic communities, uh, from patient uh, communities that are speaking out on this. In fact, in, in the 10 years that I've been with LSO, and even um, the prior with uh, the government of Ontario, I have never seen an advocacy effort like this uh, before. There's some real issues with these policies that need to be addressed. So we'll continue to work on that. All right, um, Bernard asked a question about, are we doing anything to celebrate the discovery of insulin 100 years ago? Yes, absolutely. So we've actually been in touch with um, our partners at U of T who are actually leading some of the branding around the Insulin 100 and, and some of the events, uh, as well as organizations like Novo Nordisk and Sanofi, um, who of course are key players uh, uh, in this space as well. Um, and uh, we're planning uh, to do so a little bit of a, a special celebration around that uh, at our gala, of course, we didn't have our gala this year. Uh, we're, we're expecting to do it in October. So stay tuned for that, Bernard. But yes, it is on the radar. I see we're at 9.30. So maybe we'll stop there, Andy, and we'll wrap up. All right. I would like to thank our sponsors. Um, these are our platinum sponsors who support everything that we do. Next slide, please. Our gold sponsors. And of course, our silver sponsors. And so thank you to all of the corporate sponsors. They're the ones that really allow us to do all of these events on an ongoing basis and, and do what we do really, uh, allow us to keep the lights on. In terms of upcoming events, June 17th is our LSO member marathon. Great opportunity to see uh, some of our, our members and their offerings and what they're up to. Uh, June 22nd, 
Uh, we're doing a special session in terms of unlocking your talent acquisition potential, uh, utilizing university co-op and industry supported initiatives to help build your team. And this is of course sponsored uh, by our members at uh, UT Scarborough, the Arts and Science Co-op Program. And finally, uh, if we didn't get to your question or you think of a question afterwards, uh, contact us. Uh, that's what we're here for. We're here to serve you, our members. Um, so please do reach out to us. Uh, if you want to get involved, um, we're, we're happy to chat with you anytime. And uh, if there's anything that we can help with, uh, again, that's what we're here for. So uh, take full advantage of your membership with LSO. Um, thank you for all of your support. And uh, I hope you all have a great day. Stay safe.